morning. Good morning. This month, as we remember leaders in black history, we will have reflections each Sunday on a great black leader. Paula has the reading for Barbara Harris, the right word of Barbara Harris, this morning. Please stand for our opening hymn. <laughs>
Almighty God. To you our hearts are open, all our eyes known, and from you the secrets are hid. Then the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like the tree. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgment. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look and serve your own interests on the fast day, and oppress all your workers. Look and fast only to quarrel and to fight, and to strike with the wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today do not Make your voice heard on high. In such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself, is it to bow down the head like a bulrush, or to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose to lose the bonds of injustice? to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break the yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the poorest poor into 
your house, when you see the naked, to cover them, not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of God shall be your great God. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and you will say, Here I am. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is a portion of the psalm. <coughs> Hallelujah. We will re read responsibly, responsibly by first. Hallelujah. Happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in his commandments. Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness will last forever. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice. Or they will never be shaken, the righteous will be kept in everlasting remembrance. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is right. They put their trust in the Lord. Their heart is established and will not shake. They have given freely to the poor, and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold up their head with honor.
Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It's no longer good for anything but thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house in the same way. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I've come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. <laughs>
the lost, showing mercy, living with integrity, being peacemakers, living courageously, preserving souls with the good news of salvation. Marsha Riggs wrote, disciples who do not engage in practices that humanize life on earth will be like salt that has lost its taste. You, all y'all, are disciples. You are the salt of the earth. You have places to be, things to do, the gospel to spread. And Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. He did not, you will be the salt of the earth. You are. It's already done. And then he warned that if salt is lost to taste, how can its saltiness be restored? No longer good for anything but thrown out and trampled underfoot. In the ancient world, people poured a layer of salt under the fire grate because it stabilized the heat and kept them warm through the night. But over time, the salt stopped working and it was just thrown into the street, trampled underfoot, useless. If we know what we are supposed to do and how we're supposed to live, if we know Jesus and do nothing, we become worthless. In the ancient world, salt was not worthless. Salt was valuable. The, Rem the Roman Empire paid the soldiers with sacks of salt. That's where the word salary comes from. Jesus knew his disciples were valuable. And today, February 5th, 2023, mm -hmm. Jesus needs you. You are valuable. <coughs> you see, people don't learn about God through osmosis. The good news isn't broadcast through sunbeams or rainfall or the breeze. You actually have to hear it. It's like all of you did. And in order to hear it, then you actually have to see it. And that's where the light comes in. Jesus said, you're the light of the world. If anyone's going to get to know me, especially after I'm gone, it will be up to you because you are the light of the world. I mean, what an awesome and terrifying responsibility. But it's not beyond our grasp. Because like them, we are salt. We are light. We are leaders in the church. And if the kingdom of God begins now, right now, God wants and needs you to be part of it. God needs you on board. God needs you on his team just as he needed the people of Corinth to be part of a global network of love and prayer. And so he sent Paul. In his first letter to the Corinthians, we heard, I did not come to proclaim the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom. That's good news for us. It's good news for anyone who wants to share the gospel because we can be intimidated by the vocabulary or the clever expressions or deep theological understanding that we may not have. You know why Paul managed to get to so many people? He told us, he said, I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's all I need to know. That's it. That's everything. One simple idea. Just tell the story. Nothing else is needed. You don't need any props. Just tell the story. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Paul, the apostle, was afraid. Terrified to do this. Shaking like a leaf in a windstorm, he opened his mouth and just told the story. Lives were transformed and destinies were changed. There was a global paradigm shift in the way people thought and believed. He said, my speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a, a demonstration of the spirit and the power. So that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but the power of God. You see, that's the secret to Paul's great wisdom. It's not his wisdom. It's God's wisdom. He didn't have to rely on education or experience or strategy. All he had to do was open his mouth and God's wisdom poured out. Just tell the story. 
God's love floods the streets and the homes and the minds. And I cannot tell you that it's probably more important today than it's ever been in our lifetime. You know what the fastest growing denomination in the United States is today? None. N O N E, none. More people check none as their religious preference than any other denomination. And those people's hearts are aching inside. There's still need to be filled. It's important for them to hear the good news. There's hope in it. There's love in it. There's glory in it. But they will not know it unless someone tells it. You know, I've talked to a lot of people who don't go to church anymore. And I often ask, you know, what stopped you from going to church? Without a doubt, every single one of them tells a story about someone in the church hurt them. And they walked away and never came back. If you went through all the nuns of all the fastest growing denominations in America today, and you asked them why they're not going to church, they'll tell you that someone hurt them. This place, this church needs to be a home for people who have been hurt in other churches. That's our mission. Because only through that will they get to hear the good news of salvation and be filled with hope again. But we know that there were great leaders back then. There were brilliant minds and brave hearts and knowledgeable scholars. But without God's wisdom, they were no match for Paul or Peter or Andrew or John or any of the other unnamed disciples. Paul explained that none of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. There's an interesting idea. If the persecutors actually knew Jesus, that they couldn't have killed him. Couldn't have done it. What no eye has seen, no ear heard, nor human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. That was the source of Paul's great power and influence. That's how he stood before them with such confidence because his love of God and his willingness to serve God was given God's wisdom, not human wisdom, God's wisdom, exactly when he needed it. So what about you? After all, you are salt, you are light. And God gives you both the permission <clears throat> and the requirement to do it. He gives us the authority and the responsibility to tell the story. Shaking like a leaf in a hurricane, maybe, but to tell the story. One way I heard to do this was to simply go up to someone and you talk to them and say, tell me about the best thing that ever happened to you in your life. And then listen to what they have to say. And eventually they'll say, well, what's the best thing that ever happened in your life? He said, I came face to face with the living God. I was sick. Well, what do you mean? The conversation starts, and you just tell the story. You tell your neighbors, you tell people, you know. In fact, that's your homework. You have homework this week. I'd like you to tell the story to someone that you know and trust. Tell the story to a spouse, or a relative, or a close friend, or a child. Just tell the story directly from your heart. And then be prepared to be amazed. Because you see, you are salt and you are light. And you're filled with the power of God. Amen. Amen. It's dead.
by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and was a saved man. For our sake he was crucified on the conscious pile. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Please be seated. <laughs> if the members of the vestry, but the new members of the vestry and lay Eucharistic ministers and lay Eucharistic visitors, please come forward. We want to commission these people who are salt and light in our community and actually are the boots on the ground, as they say, in this world. Please come forward for this commissioning. In the name of God, we recognize you as best members, Eucharistic ministers, and visitors from a peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Please kneel if you're able for the prayers of the people. Saying, 
the Lord have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our bishop, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For seasonable weather, and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, or through outer space, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, especially the dear Erdo, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That we may end our life in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord have mercy. In the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord our God. We pray for the men and women of our armed forces, saying, It's good. Almighty God, we commend to your gracious care and keeping all the men and women of our armed forces and all the men of our especially the women and to share kindness, joy, and faithful companionship. Receive our thanks and praise for the community between your animals and your people and all the ways in which we bless each other's lives. Bless us free to hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray for pets and animal companions. Help us to care for their needs and tend to their injuries to heal their illnesses, and to relieve their suffering. Give us wisdom to care for all the creatures of the earth and to respect their place in your creation. Bless us, great, and hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. <coughs> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and no longer repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may be in the
sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. All life is interwoven. Please be seated for the announcements. Do we have any visitors today? I love it when we have visitors. Okay, y'all, now you heard what I said earlier, right? You've got to tell people about Jesus. So tell them, bring them back. But do join us for coffee hour. I, I'd like to instill something new this week. Uh, when you get to coffee hour, I would like you to just, when you're at your table and you're sitting around, I would like you to discuss one thing. Tell someone how you came to the Lord. Say, how did you come to the Lord? Tell me your story. Listen to each other's stories about how you came to Christ this morning at coffee hour. So it's not just about your golf score or what's on TV or what movie you watch, but actually something about God in coffee hour. Because when you hear each other's stories, you will be blessed. And in that blessing, we begin to become a beloved community. And that's our goal. So do, join, do think about that at coffee hour. Uh, I want to welcome Bill. Where's Bill? Is he? Oh, he's seated. Stand up, Bill. Let's see your whole body. Bill Dake is our new organist and music director. Thank you, Bill. Um, so I'm pleased to have him with you with us. Uh, yesterday we completed the 54th annual diocesan convention at Holy Trinity Episcopal Academy in Melbourne. Uh, your representatives were there. Um, only two resolutions were passed. One that uh, Nelson Pinder, uh, who was a famous, well-known uh, black priest in the Episcopal Church in our diocese and notorious during the 60s because when riots were going on around the world, he was the one guy that led the, the, um, led the movement to, to be able to protest and not have riots. And he really held the city of Orlando together in a very difficult and turbulent time and continued to be a champion of uh, anti-racism and training in our diocese. And so they, he passed away uh, last year, and so they have set aside a day to commemorate him where there'll be special events. So that was one of the resolutions. The other resolution that passed came from the Diocese of Puerto Rico. They've had two uh, diocesan conventions in Puerto Rico and had passed twice that they wish to establish a companion relationship of sorts with the Diocese of Central Florida. We already have the longest running companion relationship uh, with the Diocese of Honduras, and we continue to do work in Honduras and have for over 25 years. Uh, in order for that to happen, certain resolutions had to be passed so that they could start doing it. So it was a resolution passed basically to begin a conversation between our bishop and the bishop of, of uh, Puerto Rico. Uh, basically, it wasn't a handshake, it was a conversation. So the door is open for us to figure out ways that we can be uh, in partnership with the, the, the church in Puerto Rico and continue to thrive and expand. Uh, not just here in Central Florida, but uh, globally. So those were the two big things. There were elections. A lot of people got elected to different offices. If you want more details, then check the website. We'll have all that information on the website on Tuesday when I do the updates. Um, Holy Eucharist on Thursdays at 10. Do join us for that. And then also Bible study on Thursdays. We're working through the book of Acts. And I got to tell you, this has been an exciting time. When you think about how the church was formed and what the roots are and the basic and what the original apostles were called and what they were doing and how they started this movement that caused this paradigm shift in the world. Uh, it's interesting to see this story and to hear that. So please join us for that. It's an hour from 11 to 12. February 22nd is Ash Wednesday. 
Uh, and since we're kind of out of pro COVID protocols, we will have a regular Ash Wednesday service. Um, we're going to have it at 4 o'clock in the afternoon because we know a lot of you don't like to drive at night. And so this will make it possible for you to get here for service and get home while it's still light out. Uh, imposition of ashes and Eucharist. Also the Holy Faith Dinner Dance is coming up. More about that as we move forward. Oh, Claudette has something to say. Now, on the subject of dinner dance, I also spoke to yesterday. I had a chance to talk with uh, pastors, uh, and I, particularly of uh, other uh, Caribbean congregations, two in Palm Bay and a couple of others, and uh, talked to them about our dinner dance, uh, tell them to do that. And one said, Well, we have one in December. I said, Okay, we'll go to yours if you come to ours. <laughs> do we have any birthdays this week? Nope. How about uh, wedding anniversaries this week? Oh, uh oh. Two wedding anniversaries. <laughs> hmm? You have two wives. Yeah, Who do you think you are, Solomon? <laughs> So, for how many years for you two? 35. 35 years. Wow. That's good. And you? 62? <laughs> Pauline's not sure that she can do 62 years with Dennis. I'm not surprised. <laughs> O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these your servants that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness that their homes may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You can kiss your bride now. Sure. In public, too. Ah. You didn't think I could do that. I, do it again. Do it again. <laughs> yes, Paula. Okay. It is. And um, we have a tradition here of um, donating to what the seat and it's Super Bowl, S O U P E R. Super Bowl Sunday.
Perfect. Perfect. Good. Do you guys do soup for coffee hour that day? <laughs> Just wondering. No? Okay. You do? You do? You guys want to do soup for Super Bowl Sunday on coffee hour? I tell you what, if you guys want to do that, I'll put up a hundred bucks for the best soup. Now you want to make some soup? Huh? Okay, Super Bowl Sunday is on next week. Don't miss it. The contest, you bet. A hundred bucks for first prize. How's that? Only one winner. I'm not rich. I can't do second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth place. <laughs> yes, Aquinda. Uh-huh. And I didn't see it in the bulletin. And after church we have a meeting in the Paris Center. Paris Center is a meeting for, for uh, Daughters of the King. And I, I had asked that it was in the bulletin. Oh, sorry. So um but every the first Sunday of each month we go to have our meeting. Okay, so Daughters of the King meet first Sunday in there. Uh, I'm especially happy with the daughters for the convention. I don't know if you knew this or not, but the daughters had a special convention of people who prayed during the whole thing the, at Holy Trinity, um, the, the big auditorium. Uh, right outside the doors is a small chapel. And so during the entire convention, there were daughters in there praying for the convention the whole time through. Now, the work that the daughters do in prayer is magnanimous and important. Uh, Bishop Brewer was the national chaplain. We're privileged to have the chaplain for the diocese in our congregation. Uh, Daughters is a big deal in this church, and it's the one thing that we can do. Yes, Father Bill, that one. That one. The old Brit in the back. (laughs) I must tell you, yesterday they had a test for our voting, and to do it they would ask some dumb question. Do you like it sunny or rainy, right? And I looked at Bill, he says, I'm from England, of course I like it rainy. (laughs) He's a funny guy. Uh, Do we have any travelers this week? No travelers, okay. Let's stand and process into the world on this little light of mine. I bet you know it. I don't think, you don't have this one, do you? Yes. You have the choral benediction? No. No, okay. So we'll have to do it a cappella. We know it. Ready? Go now in peace. Never be afraid. God will go with you each hour of every day. Oh, now in faith, steadfast, strong, and true, the 
In the name of Christ, Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Amen. Amen. Amen.